A while ago I talked about my philosophy surrounding the idea of downloading other people's gameplay videos for use in your own videos talking about said game. But what I didn't talk about is the tool that I personally like to use to download these videos. And I thought it would be interesting to not only talk about the tool, but talk about some of the problems that it has faced relatively recently regarding copyright. Surprise, surprise, the copyright system sucks and is super broken. The unfortunate reality is that the copyright system is archaic and broken and under tight control by the entities who stand to make the most from tight restrictions around intellectual properties. As an example, if it weren't for a certain corporation, then everybody's favorite mouse would be public domain by now. Bible? No. Oh. Mickey Mouse, you idiot. Sorry. Another thing that I think is worth noting is that platforms like YouTube tend to get a lot of flack for the way that they go about obeying these copyright laws. The Digital Millennium Copyright Act, otherwise known as the DMCA, puts most of the power into the hands of the person making the copyright claim. And another unfortunate reality is that there are a lot of bad actors on the internet who want nothing more than to take something like a movie or a song and put it up on their own YouTube channel and try to earn money from it in some way or another. In fact, I'd be surprised if by now you haven't run into something like a 24-7 Family Guy stream or some other channel rebroadcasting John Oliver segments. It's kind of a problem. There are hundreds and thousands of hours of content uploaded to YouTube every hour, every day. And of course, that's so much content that there's no company in the world that would be able to hire enough people to be able to churn through those manually and make a judgment call based on whether they think it's copyright infringing or not. It's just not possible. There are so many problems with that idea. So of course, these platforms like YouTube, for example, use bots to try and do matching for you. And they've gotten pretty good at it. Granted, they still have a ways to go to improve, but they've improved a lot since the early days. And in my opinion, they're making the platform way better by existing. That's not to say, however, that YouTube can't do a better job at protecting its users and its creators from frivolous copyright claims. YouTube can obviously be a lot more proactive and a lot more transparent when it comes to copyright in general and protecting its users from people who would abuse the copyright system. Because again, there are plenty of those as well. All in all, it's not a perfect system, but it, it's a necessary evil. However, uh, it's kind of off topic. There is a reason I'm talking about all this copyright stuff though, uh, and we'll get there. But let me introduce you to the tool that I like to use to download YouTube videos. This is called YouTube-DL. This is an open source project that is maintained by a lot of different people. 768 contributors to the library. That is, uh, Wow, this is a lot bigger than I thought. I know there's probably other YouTube downloading libraries out there, but this is the one that I happen to find and I happen to use. In fact, I would bet that most of the YouTube downloading tools that you can find on the internet use this library as its backend. The big reason that I choose to use this tool myself instead of using any of those websites is because Every single time that I go to those websites, I feel like I'm gonna get some sort of virus on my computer. Like, the ads are intrusive, the, the website looks like it was made in five minutes by somebody who just hastily scrawled some HTML on <laughs> into a text editor. It, they don't look good, they don't look safe. So, I eventually found this project, and I learned how to use it, and I've been using it for the past few years with great success. In addition, most of the websites that I found, they either ask you to pay for access to get the highest quality videos from your downloads, or they just don't allow the highest quality videos from the downloads at all, because uh, surprise, surprise, not everybody who makes a website knows exactly what they're doing. And when it comes to downloading YouTube videos, at least with this tool, 
you need um you need to put a little more effort into it if you want the highest quality now this is probably going to be a little bit of gobbledygook for the people who don't really know anything about command line or command line arguments or anything like that but uh, there's a there's a command set of commands that I like to use with YouTube-DL.exe to download my videos. Now I didn't come up with this myself, and this might seem a little too complicated, and I think it probably is a little too complicated. But what I found is if I didn't include these extra arguments, I would end up downloading a 1080p 60 video at 720p 30, which is when you're downloading something and trying to put it into your own video you're going to want the highest quality possible because, you know, uploading and then downloading and then uploading and downloading and uploading and downloading is going to go through a lot of different compression cycles and it's going to ruin everything. So the higher quality that you can get, the better the video is going to turn out in the end. And that goes back to the whole thing of other websites uh, not allowing you to download at the highest possible quality. It's because they don't know this one simple trick. I mean, I guess it's not really simple. It's something that um, I guess is specific to YouTube and the way that they host their content distribution networks. There's a lot of clever engineering behind it, a lot of clever engineering that I don't know, but there's a reason why YouTube works so well for so many people. And uh, this is probably an artifact of that. But regardless, this is the line that I like to use. I'm not, this isn't going to be a tutorial for how to use YouTube downloader, but you know, there you go. If you ever need it, bada bing bada boom. This tool is incredibly powerful. It allows you to extract the audio from a video so you can download the video and then just have an MP3 of whatever music or audio was from that video. Uh, you can download entire playlists and it goes beyond just YouTube as well. You can download Twitch clips, Twitch VODs, you can download uh, things from SoundCloud. Uh, there's probably a dozen other websites that this happens to work on. Um, but Twitch, SoundCloud, YouTube are pretty much the only ones I've used it for. And I've used it <laughs> probably just as much to re-download my old videos as much as I have used it to download uh, video game trailers or gameplay for games that I don't own or don't have the means to record. So it's been an incredibly valuable tool for me and I, I recommend it to everybody, everybody that I work with who has a need to download YouTube videos for some reason. Just a little bit of learning can go a long way. But hey clown, what about the copyright issues that you were talking about? Oh, well, well I'm glad you asked. If there's one thing that everybody knows about copyright, it's that the music industry and the movie industry, they're kind of evil and all controlling when it comes to this stuff. I mean, I get that they want to protect their copyrights, but they're, they're just like super aggressive about it and it's kind of gross. So back in October of 2020, I tried to use this tool and uh, there was an error. Usually when there's an error, what I do is I update the tool with a dash U command line option and it'll update the library and everything will work fine until the next update or until YouTube decides to break things again. But one day there was an error and I tried to update and the update, it didn't work. So naturally, something not working, I had to Google, put in my query, and I found out that in October of 2020, the Recording Industry Association of America, the RIAA, filed a takedown notice against this specific library to GitHub. Now the whole reason I talked about YouTube and the way that it handles copyright stuff is because pretty much every platform that hosts user-created content has to do very similar things. If a copyright holder makes a claim that could seem legitimate to a platform, then the platform has to take that content down. It sucks, I know, but the alternative is that the platform itself gets shut down. If the platform does not comply with the DMCA, then the platform gets shut down and everybody, everybody who uses the platform is going to lose everything that they have on that platform. Like if YouTube gets shut down because they refuse to honor a copyright takedown by MGM or something like that, then there's a significant risk of 
things escalating and then YouTube becoming liable for millions upon millions of dollars of damages and then that could stack up and then that could maybe create precedent and then maybe everything could just go down the toilet in a nice little counterclockwise spiral. Who knows? But to stop that spiraling from happening, they, they, they just, they gotta, they gotta do their due diligence and honor the takedowns when they come in. Losing one creator is infinitely better than losing the hundreds of thousands of people who rely on GitHub or Twitch or YouTube to lose everything. Here's an excerpt of an article written on bleepingcomputer.com. While GitHub states that this is a DMCA infringement notice, it is not a takedown request for a copyright violation. Instead, the notice states that the repository should be taken down because it allows for downloading copyrighted music and is therefore illegal under both the USA and German law. Indeed, the comments in the YouTube-DL source code make clear that the source code was designed and is marketed for the purpose of circumventing YouTube's technological measures to enable unauthorized access to our members' copyrighted works. And to make unauthorized copies and distributions thereof, they identify our members' works. They note that the works are Vivo videos, virtually all of which are owned by our member companies. They acknowledge that those works are licensed to YouTube under the YouTube standard license, and they use those examples in the source code to describe how to obtain unauthorized access to copies of our members' works. In light of the above noted copyright infringements and anti-circumvention violations, we ask that you immediately take down and disable access to the YouTube-DL source code at all of its locations where it is hosted on GitHub, including without limitation those locations in the representative list set forth above blah 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 blah. As others have noted, YouTube-DL is used for far more than just downloading YouTube videos, but also to download free documentaries, public domain videos, and other works. In general, YouTube-DL is an incredibly helpful tool that allows people to download many, many things that are otherwise difficult to get your hands on. I mean, sure, those things were made difficult for a reason, but at the same time, as ambiguous as it is, fair use is a thing that exists. Downloading free or public domain things is a thing that exists. There are also plenty of things that are copyright free or are or people are willing to share. Uh, there's just countless reasons for this library to exist other than just downloading <laughs> Justin Timberlake Vivo videos or whatever. They also included this tweet from somebody on Twitter. YouTube-DL program for downloading YouTube videos was removed from GitHub today since it is able to be used to download copyrighted music. Knives can be used to kill people, but we still let people carry them because they can be used for other things too. I've used YouTube-DL to download lectures, free documentaries, debates and discussions, interviews, and NASA video footage. But because the program can be used to download music, it clearly should be taken down. Of course, this is a perfect example of clueless lawyers or executives or whoever, whoever n noticed that this tool exists, swinging a gigantic hammer to hit the broadest freaking target possible to do what they do best. Screw over the little people. Hey, while we're at it, how about we ban microphones because I can hold it up to a speaker and Oh, we can also ban Audacity and Adobe Audition because I can use that microphone to digitally record whatever is coming out of the speaker, which uh, could be it could be a copy of Justin Timberlake's newest hit on YouTube, and I'm recording it into Audition with my microphone. Oh, better yet, let's ban OBS because I can record whatever's on my desktop very easily and then turn that into an mp3 for listening for myself. Same thing, right? If you're gonna ban one thing because it could be used for a possibly nefarious thing, then you gotta ban everything else that has that same capability, right? I could very easily use OBS or a camera or a microphone or Adobe Audition to make unauthorized copies of just about anything that I want. It's, it's that's how recording software <laughs> works. And what YouTube-DL is, it just allows you to skip that middleman step. You don't have to waste the time, the real time actually doing the recording to actually get the recording. I mean, sure, there's a difference, but at the same time, the end result is the same. So, you see where I'm going with this? It's, I don't know what else to say about it. Luckily though, 
GitHub seems to be a lot more proactive in protecting its users than YouTube has ever cared to be. Software development is built upon iteration, upon iteration, upon iteration. Everything that has ever been made is an improvement on something else that somebody else has made in the past. Open source libraries are shared and used to make all the awesome services that we use today. But even with all that open source goodness, there are some more restrictive licenses and things that require attribution, things that are not allowed to be used commercially. So GitHub has to kind of be on top of things here. And being software developers themselves, I'm sure that uh, they're doing the best that they can for their people, for us, the software developers who use it. Today we reinstated YouTube-DL, a popular project on GitHub, after we received additional information about the project that enabled us to reverse a Digital Millennium Copyright Act takedown. At GitHub, our priority is supporting open source and the developer community, and so we share developers' frustrations with this takedown, especially since this project has many legitimate purposes. Our actions were driven by processes required to comply with laws like the DMCA that put platforms like GitHub and developers in a difficult spot. And with our reinstatement based on new information that showed the project was not circumventing technical protection measures, TPM, was in line with our values of putting developers first. We know developers want to understand what happened here and want to know how GitHub will stand up for developers and refine our processes on these issues. They go on to say, As a platform, we must comply with laws, even ones that we don't think are fair for developers. As we've seen, this can lead to situations where GitHub is required to remove code, even if it has a multitude of non-infringing uses, if it is in fact designed to circumvent a TPM. But this is exceedingly rare. Less than 2% of the DMCA takedowns we process are based on circumvention claims, and of those 2%, this was a particularly unusual case. DMCA takedown claims based on circumvention are a growing industry-wide issue for developers with far-reaching implications. We'll get into this in more detail, but first, here's some quick background. I'm not going to read this whole blog for you. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description below so you can go read it yourself. It's quite lengthy, but it's very illuminating. But what I find most interesting about this post from GitHub in general is what they talk about at the bottom. They mention a developer defense fund where they will contribute some money to help developers defend themselves against frivolous or unwarranted copyright claims or takedowns. And on top of that, they're taking the initiative to try and improve the DMCA, try and improve copyright law for all their developers, all their users, and ultimately for themselves because they they themselves are users and software developers so chalk this one up as a win for the little guy even if only temporarily it does suck that big corporations like the riaa or movie companies or record labels they, it sucks that they have this power to destroy to destroy uh, let's just leave it there they have this power to destroy <laughs> And if we're lucky, this is going to be the beginning of some positive changes as we go into the future of digital content, open source software, etc. I don't know how YouTube's revenues or user base compares to GitHub's, but I've never seen anything from Google or from YouTube talking about working to try and improve the co like copyright law for creators. This is something that I wasn't expecting to read whenever I came across this article, and one of the reasons why I wanted to bring it up in a video is because it's, it's awesome. Just straight up, it's awesome. Unfortunately, it seems like what GitHub is doing here is um, it's a very narrow, uh, a very narrow target. Specifically, they're talking about improving anti-circumvention exceptions or something like that, um, which it's a start, but it doesn't seem like it's going to spread very far but you know man can hope right but that's going to be it for this video if you could do me a favor and circumvent that dislike button to get to the like button you know that would be pretty awesome too man can dream right see you next time